the next one. These are derivatives of hydrocarbons, um, something called without a carbonyl. You don't know what a carbon. We've seen carbonyls before in transition metal, ligands, the CO double bond. So these are hydrocarbons that are a little more funky than the first flow chart, but that don't have CO double bonds. Okay. So uh, let's start here uh, on the left hand side. Organic halides or sometimes also called alkyl halides. So organic or alkyl, A-L-K-Y-L, uh, -L, alkyl halides or organic halides. This is where uh, you have an X, which would be chlorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. You also notice we're going to start to use this R terminology. R means something that's organic. So something that's organic attached to a halide is an organic halide. Okay? So again, chlorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. AR, the arene, so if you have an arene attached to a halogen, that's also called an organic halide or an alkyl halide. Um, common examples of this, Teflon. Freon, etc. So Teflon, the non-stick stuff, Freon, uh, these are organic halides. So those fluorines and fluorines on those structures uh, give it the properties that they have. Alcohols. So another, our next functional group. Alcohols is whenever you have an OH on an organic. So if there's an OH, so everybody knows their favorite alcohol. Anytime you're drinking alcohol, that's an organic with an OH. Sometimes students will like steal alcohol from the labs because they're excited to get it free. Why would that be a bad idea? First, that's illegal. <laughs> the strength factor is not a factor if you drink in moderation. So, but you can, you know, get like 200 fruit. That's pretty potent. Uh, the other is. Or alcohols made for lab use are not made for human consumption. So there are impurities in there that are harmful to the human body. So it always, it's always really stupid when somebody takes lab alcohol uh, home to drink because you're actually hurting yourself <laughs> with, with like dangerous things that are mixed in uh, when it's made industrial. Okay, phenols. Phenols. This is an arene with an OH. Okay, so it's kind of an alcohol, but uh, it has an arene on it. Examples of these, like anybody heard of uh, like poison sumac, poison oak, poison ivy? Those are phenols. They're organic acids. That's why they do so well on your skin. They, your skin's organic, so that's great, and they're acids, so uh, it does a number on your skin. Those are phenols. Ethers. An ether is where you have an oxygen, kind of like an alcohol, but in the middle of the organic. So if oxygen's in the middle, whether there's arenes or uh, just regular organic. So notice here, there's an R and an R prime. R prime just means the left hand side and the right hand side could look different, or they could look the same. So if there's different R groups, again, which are organics, <laughs> and there's an oxygen in the middle, that's called an ether. Ethers used to be really popular anesthetics until, until uh, people realize, oh, they're flammable. <laughs> you want your patient to catch on fire or something. So these are flammable, but you'll use them in your OCHEM lab because uh, they're, uh, they're useful uh, solvents. OK, so that's ethers. Next, amines, amines. So when you have a nitrogen in here, so I mean, just like ammonia has a nitrogen, and see there's an R group attached to the end. You can have, because nitrogen can have how many bonds? Three. So you could have three different R groups on the nitrogen. That's still an amine. Anybody ever go swimming and smell that kind of chlorine smell before? You know what I'm talking about? You go to a, with a YMCA or a public pool, like, Oh, they put too much chlorine in the pool. 
exit. Actually, the opposite is true. There's not enough chlorine whenever you smell that. You can't smell chlorine. What you're smelling is the amines from people's bodies getting into the water and uh, bonding to the chlorine. There's not enough chlorine in that case. So to fix that problem, you put a lot more chlorine. If you ever go to somebody's spa or a, a pool and you smell that smell, you need to tell that person to put a lot more chlorine in the water. <laughs> so if you, your sweat, your spit, somebody pees in the water, that's really bad for a pool. Uh, it'll give it that smell. Because all those substances from your body have amines. They make these chloramine substances. And amines are really smelly. A lot of amine things smell. 